Now that we finished rigging our muscle, let's go ahead and apply it to a skinned asset. So in the scene, we have our our arm asset. So let's say we go ahead and start to, to work with this and, and add a bicep muscle. What I'll do is head over to layers and we'll go ahead and hide the armor. What I'd also like to do is just go ahead and hide the arm temporarily so we can quickly add the muscle to this arm rig. And I'll go ahead and close out layers. Feel free to go ahead and dock the layer manager just to access it faster. And now it's time to go ahead and import in our muscle asset. So let's choose import merge. We're going to scroll down. Here it is. We'll open it up. We'll choose all so everything gets imported in and choose OK. All right. So now it's time to just align this muscle to the, the upper arm. And then we can start to adjust it to make sure that we get a nice bulge when the arm moves. So let's go ahead and grab the muscle's global node. And with it selected, we'll use Alt-A to align it to our shoulder bone, making sure it's in, of course, position and orientation. We'll now choose OK. So next, let's go to our rotate tool, making sure we're using the gimbal coordinate system. We can try to start to rotate this in place. We could see that the muscle will not be aligned to our upper arm. Why is this happening? Well, simply because of our axis order, which we've already discussed. So if we were to change our axis order, we'll get much better rotation. What I'll do is go ahead and undo back to bring the muscle back to the center. Let's go to our motion panel and under our rotation list, we'll go ahead and scroll down and we'll change our axis order to what we've used already, Z, X, Y. Now watch. We'll go ahead and Alt-A align to the upper arm. And we can now start to rotate in the Z axis, and now we have much better rotation. Now, just so we can make sure that this is perfectly aligned, all we need to do is rotate 90 degrees. So we can go ahead and press the A key to enter angle snap, and we can now rotate in the Z axis 90 degrees. There we have it. All right, so next, let's go to wireframe mode with F3. With the global node still selected, we want to kind of scale this object down just a little bit more. Great. And now, going to our Move tool, I'll we'll press F3 again to go back to Shaded Mode. But making sure the Move tool is set to Local, we can go ahead and start to slide this down the arm. All right. So next, here's what we'll want to do. We want to make sure that our bicep muscle here is going to be connected to our upper arm. All right, so with the Global node selected, we're going to go ahead and link that to the upper arm. But then we need to make sure that the end anchor is linked to the forearm so that as the forearm bends, we'll start to get our bulge. Now, first things first, we need to make sure that the end anchor is in the right spot. If you look at a bicep, its end anchor would be slightly down the forearm. So that's what we need to do here to get some realistic results. Let's go ahead and grab the end anchor. And again, in local mode, we're going to grab our Y and X axes, grab this gizmo and we'll go ahead and start to slide this slightly down the forearm and then from there we can now go ahead and take our link tool and link this helper to the forearm so here's what we end up with when we go ahead and grab the arm and we start to bend it in there's our bulge really cool so that should look really nice when we start to paint weight now before we do let's go ahead and add some animation so we could check our progress on frame 20, we'll go there and we'll go in and just bend the arm. All right. So now we can go ahead and turn off auto key. We can go ahead and bring back the arm. We will unfreeze it. Feel free to kind of check where the bulge is going to be in wireframe mode, just pressing F3. So that's going to work out just fine. It's always good to check. When we paint weight, we'll make sure that it's only influencing the bicep. All right, so we won't take too much longer to set this up because we kind of have an idea already of how to paint weights. So it's just a matter of knowing where to paint. I'll go ahead and press F4 to enter wireframe mode so we can keep track of our topology. 
And now if we'd like to add this muscle as an influence, it's actually very easy to do. All we need to do is head over to our modify panel and we'll go ahead and add the muscle as another bone object. It's as simple as that. So go ahead and find it. Here it is at the top of the list. And we'll choose select. Now here's the thing. If we were to go ahead and go to edit envelope mode, you could see how much influence the muscle has. So as we start to scrub, you could see, all right, it's, it's starting to bulge the arm definitely, but it has a bit too much influence. So all we need to do is start to, to smooth this out with our paint weight tool. So I won't take too much time doing this, again, because we already have an idea of how to paint weight. But just to give you an idea of how I would take care of this, we can head over to our options, taking a look at our settings. I might set the size here to 2. And then for the max strength, I'll set this to 1 so we can start to block in weight. We can make sure our fall off for the brush is set to fast. So we could just start to block weight in. And then, if you'd like, you can go ahead and smooth this out. Again, we know how to do that using the preset to the left when we start to smooth those deformations out. And then, at that point, we'd, of course, want to start dropping the strength until we have a polished muscle. All right, so again, leaving the strength at 1 for now, we'll go ahead and grab our paintbrush. If you notice as you start to paint that it's very smooth, you're not actually painting a harsh value in, just make sure that paint blend weight is off. With that on, it's just a faster way to blend weight. But if we want to block in weight, you'll want to keep this off. Otherwise, you won't paint the way you'd like to. All right, so now we'll go ahead and select the shoulder bone. Here it is. We'll go back to our brush, and we'll just start to block this in. We're isolating where the Biceps should bulge. I really enjoy this process of blocking in weight and then smoothing out afterwards because when we block in with 100%, we know exactly where those points are weighted. If we start with a lower strength, we don't quite know exactly where each point is weighted. So this just helps us to kind of manage our weights a bit better. It's almost like sketching where you'd block in your sketch, you wouldn't go to the final immediately, and then once you start to have an idea, then you could start to add more refinements. So that's basically what we're doing here. All right. So, I might spend a little bit more time here just kind of blocking this in, a bit more filling in these areas so that the the bicep doesn't control too much. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our progress now when we scrub through. All right, so that's looking better already. You can see these parts here, this is actually being influenced by the shoulder. So we'd want to kind of smooth this out between the, the bicep muscle and shoulder. Remember, you also have your envelope capsules that you could start to work with. So if we wanted to go in, we can grab the muscle, should be towards the end of the list. You could always go ahead and grab the envelope capsule and start to adjust this so it doesn't control as much. So as we start to scrub through, let's go ahead and see how that looks. All right, so the elbow is already starting to look a bit better. All right, so you get the idea here. We just want to kind of smooth this out some. I might grab the opposite end of the muscle's envelope capsule and start to just bring this in a bit more. Great. So we have all of these amazing tools in Max just to kind of speed up the time it takes to to set this all up. All right. So I might go back to the opposite end of this capsule just to kind of tweak this a bit more with the arm bulge. Again, just to get an idea of what needs to be tweaked after this. And now we could go ahead and drop our strength, let's say, to about 0.05. And we can take a look at what the muscle needs to influence. We can go back to our paintbrush. We can start to blend that in. I might increase this a little bit more, let's say to about 0.2, about 20% or so, just to paint a little bit faster. Great. All right. 
Remember with Alt, you can go ahead and remove weight. So by holding down Alt, you can go ahead and start to take away some weight that you might have spent too much too much strength in. You can just go ahead and start to take that away a bit. So for here, I'd most certainly want to start to paint a bit more to the muscle. Just had a, a little bit more influence. But then we'd want to take a lot of this weight here and paint it back to the upper arm. So I'll go ahead and end with that. I'll just go ahead and select the upper arm. I'll start to just blend this by adding more weight coming from that envelope. All right. I might decrease the size of the brush to about one. This is looking much better already. I'll go back to the strength and set this to 0 0.05. When we start to get to these finer areas, we want to use finer values to smooth this out a bit more. So you get the idea. So now if we were to scrub through, we should notice that the bicep is bulging more naturally. Very cool. So that's an idea of how to create a custom muscle. I'll tell you, it can do wonders for your deformations. If you need a fast muscle solution, you can most certainly use that. If you'd like to learn other muscle techniques, we actually cover a really cool muscle rig that is integrated into the CAT system in 3ds Max. Feel free to take a look at Introduction to CAT for more information on that. But again, if you need a really fast muscle rig, we can simply just go ahead and import in the muscle rig that we've made and get it connected to our characters. Remember also to study anatomy so you have an idea of how to hook in your anchor points so that the muscle will react properly. But that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. In the next lesson, we're going to get into working with morph targets.